Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here. How are you doing today? Um, I hope well. Today I'm going to be talking about solving by factoring. This should be a complete review from Algebra 1 and, and a skill you've been using for the last two years in Algebra 1 and Geometry, even the beginning of this year. Um, but let's remind you, the graph of a quadratic function looks like a parabola, right? Or um, we often say it looks like a U-shape, okay? And today what we're going to be interested in is finding those places where that graph crosses the x-axis, okay, where it crosses the x-axis, so right here and right here in this graph. These values as are known as, normally you call them the x-intercepts, but they're also called, so or the, they're also called the zeros of the functions or the roots of the function, possibly the solutions of the function. And there is actually a slight difference, but right now we're not going to worry about the technicality. We're going to get more involved with it um, soon. All right, so let's look at what you already know. Um, if you're given the equations um, to find the roots, the zeros, or the solutions, you actually use the zero product property. The zero product property. And the zero product property basically says if you have a quadratic or actually any polynomial in factored form like this and it's equal to zero, then you can um, you can set each factor equal to zero to find the value that would make the equation true. So you are setting each factor equal to zero, oops, and solving. So x equals one and x equals ne negative five. We're also gonna look at given the roots writing the equation, okay? So that would be a situation where I give you, I don't know, x plus 3. I, I tell you that x equals negative 3 and x equals 5. So you'd write them as factors, so x plus 3 and x minus 5, and you would write it as a product and multiply it out. So we're going to be going through that today as well. All right, but a reminder, the zero product property basically says um, if the factors of two expressions is zero, then um, a, a one or the other of the expressions equals zero. Um, in algebra, basically, if a, b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. Um, the example, here we have a factored polynomial, that's a, that's b, so then x plus five equals zero or x plus two equals zero, so x equals negative five or x equals negative two. Again, a reminder of the zero product property. All right, so how do we apply it? Well, you find the roots of each equation by using your factoring rules um, as long as the equation is set equal to zero. It has to be set equal to zero first. So I look at this. I have a quadratic equation. It's set equal to zero. So I'm going to solve by factoring. Now, it's not always possible to factor. Um, there are other ways to do it, but um, this looks factorable. So I'm going to factor with the think factors that add to 30 and, um, I'm sorry, multiply to 30 and add to 7, which would be x plus 10 and x minus 3 equals 0. And then using the zero product property, set each factor equal to 0 to get the roots of the equation. Again, these are uh, rational numbers, real numbers, so the roots, it will have two x-intercepts, negative 10, 0, and 3, 0. And those are the zeros of the function. All right, this one's a little bit trickier. I'd like you to try and solve it. We're going to talk about this one tomorrow. Um, so 3x squared minus 2x equals 21 is not set equal to 0. So the first step would be to get it set equal to 0 and make sure your polynomial is in standard form. That means descending order by exponent. Then you're going to solve by factoring. Now, this is one of the harder factoring problems, so we've got to follow those rules we talked about earlier. So this would be 3x and x, and let's see, 7 and 3, so minus and plus, and then we apply the zero product property, so 3x plus 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So x will equal negative 7 over 3, and x equals 3. All right, so all of that should be review for you. Um, let's look at just a couple harder ones. All right, let me look at a harder example. Something like number five. 
Well, why is number five interesting? Well, because the zero product property you can only apply when something is factored and it's equaling zero. So because this does not equal zero, I can't say that V equals 10 or V equals V plus three equals 10 because there's no such thing as called the 10 product property. It's called the zero product property. So you'd actually have to use simplify the expression on the left. So you'd have to distribute getting V squared plus three V equals 10. Now it's a quadratic set equal to zero so I'm going, to, or I'm going to get the quadratic set equal to zero and solve by factoring. So we get v and v and plus five minus two. So v would equal negative five and v would equal two by the zero product property. All right, I also love it when um, I give it to you in function form, like these are functions and it says find the zeros. Well, to find the zeros, remember, they are the x-intercepts. So that's where y is equal to zero. So we set y equal to zero and then solve by factoring. However, one thing that I'm really big about is this is an equation and it has a GCF. So because it's an equation and not just an expression, instead of pulling that GCF out to the front, you know what you can do? You can divide it out to simplify the equation. So I'm gonna divide every single term by three. If you do whatever you do to the left and you have to do to the right, so what happens is it becomes zero equals two x squared minus x minus twenty one. Now it's a much easier problem for us to factor. So um, I'm going to factor that. I'm not going to drop my zero because it's an equation. Let's see, seven and three and minus and plus. So x is going to be 7 over 2, and x equals negative 3. Now, you might be saying, Coach Red, how are you doing that so fast? How are you getting 7 over 2 so fast? Well, that's a question I want you to ask me in class tomorrow. So if you're really paying attention, you're going to ask me in class tomorrow. All right, last thing I wanted to review was if you're given the roots of a function, writing a quadratic function, um, and this one's nice because it's assume that a equals one um, because you can't really assume that a is one and so there's going to be a technique we're going to use later on to do that. All right, so first, remember, these are the solutions or the roots, okay, or the x-intercepts. So if I'm working backwards, look, look what we did. We factored, we took those factors, set them equal to zero, we got their roots. Okay, so to work backwards, we need to write these as root, as factors. So to write them as factors, we write them as their opposite. Okay, then we multiply. So x squared minus 5x plus 7x minus 35 equals 0. And then x squared plus 2x minus 35 equals 0. Um, and then x squared plus 2x minus 35 equals y. It says write it as a quadratic function, so I could set it equal to y or f of x. All right, I want you to try number 11 and number 12, and um, we're going to talk about how we have answered some of our essential questions. All right, have a great day.